Hi there, Suetonia here. I want to go over the Armageddon I used in my recent video and tell you a bit about the fitting, why I chose this ship and why I think this ship is effective right now. Probably the key part of my setup is the free hyperspatial warp accelerators that I use on my fit. This allows the Armageddon to warp faster than 3 AU per second. While you do lose a lot of power by fitting these rigs, since you lose the rig slots and you lose the CPU from the ship too, which also requires you to fit a CPU module in the low slots for my specific fit, I really find the rigs to be incredible for roaming. Being able to warp the same speed as a cruiser allows you to roam space at a much more comfortable and aggressive pace. It allows you to avoid a lot of overbearing defense gangs as you'll often be faster than the blob they put together for you, allowing you to move systems away from bigger ships and fight the smaller more mobile ships which you are well equipped to fight. I was also able to get several rata kills in my Armageddon which I attribute partly to these rigs. The key factor to why I like this Armageddon is the fact that it's well equipped to deal with the current meta. My Armageddon would be in a lot of trouble versus a properly fit combat battleship or a command ship like the Slepnir. However, due to the meta, no one is really flying these ships right now. And uh, another part of the Armageddon that's key is it does my fit does over a thousand damage, which for a battleship is not really that impressive, but it's a thousand DPS that applies very well to cruisers, since I have uh, rapid heavy missiles and also heavy drones, which can deal with cruisers just fine if if I have a stasis web of on them, which I have. And on top of that, I have two heavy newts as well, which um, they have um, half the effective um, newting power of a curse and the same range, which is also very good. And so not only do I have high damage with high application, I can also break, act, uh, break active tanks very easily with my heavy newts, which amplifies my damage further. And I can also turn off kiting ships' propul um, propulsion modules, which is also how a lot of um, smaller ships mitigate damage. So I can turn off the MWD of interceptors, I can turn off oversized props from um, tactical destroyers, and I can also turn off MWDs of um, heavy assault cruisers, and anything that can really... Um, mitigate my damage is going to be in trouble with the heavy heavy neutralizers. When I created this Armageddon, I had three main goals in mind. I wanted a ship which would be cheap and cost less than 100 million isk to replace. I wanted a ship which could roam at an effective speed, and I also wanted a ship which could be very good at dealing with the current metagame of Sveeple and Orphra Spam, which are two very oppressive ships. I really want to give a shout out and thank you to Prometheus Exemful, who helped me a lot with the theory crafting. Um, Prom inspired me to fly a battleship with hyperspace rigs after we had looked together at a lot of battlecruiser fits, which used one hyperspace rig to return battlecruisers to 3, per, 3 AU per second warp speed. Then we started looking at battleships and found that the Armageddon was very effective for its price and still had a lot of power despite the setbacks with the hyperspace rigs. I want to speak a bit about the Svipul, Orphrus and Tactical Destroyers and how it has indirectly made the Armageddon a lot more possible. Um, the Svipul is an overpowered ship and it, along with the Confessor to a lesser extent, has completely destroyed the frigate meta roaming in Nullsec. Tactical, tactical Destroyers are overpowered right now and they're incredibly oppressive to frigates in Nullsec. As a result, a lot less people are using Tech 2 frigates like Assault Frigates, Interceptors and Stealth, bom stealth Bombers because the Sveeple completely obsoletes their roles in solo and small gangs. I am incredibly salty about this because the frigate meta was very healthy before the arrival of Tactical Destroyers and now it has been destroyed, but there is a reason why I'm telling you this. The absence of these frigates is what has made the Armageddon a much more viable ship to roam with. Stealth bombers, stealth bombers can apply an incredible amount of damage to battleships. Um, assault frigates are really tanky ships with very good damage mitigation which can hold down a battleship for a long time. And interceptors too, um, with their high damage mitigation and tackle cap bonuses, are very hard to shake off, even with your newts. With the viability of these ships in small gang roles being obsoleted by the Sveeple, there are far fewer of them around, and you're way less likely to encounter them, which is a very good thing for heavier ships like the Armageddon. One common myth a lot of people believe is that battleship PvP is expensive or it has to be expensive, but this is not really the case. Let's look at some quick stats. I paid 179.5 million isk for my Armageddons, and I insured them at a cost of 64.3 million isk. Whenever they die, right now, as, as I'm recording this video, I get 214.3 million isk back when they die. Um, subtracting the whole cost and the insurance cost, um, 
we, it actually just leaves us with a just under 30 million its cost to lose the hull, which is less than faction navy cruisers, like the Stabber fleet issue and the Omen navy issue, and not really much more than you would pay for a Tech 2 frigate hull, or, and it's actually cheaper than pretty much every pirate frig frigate right now. And I then paid around 55 million isk for the fittings, ammo, rig, and nanite paste, which leaves total a cost of around 85 million isk for the Armageddon. And again, that's probably what you would pay for a Tech 2 fitted Omen Navy issue with two T2 Locust rigs, or a pirate faction frigate. And I, I know what is affordable and what isn't is subjective, and it depends very much on the person. But I believe for the majority of players, 85 million isk is a very acceptable loss. So my fit is far from the only viable Armageddon fit. Feel free to replace the warp, uh, warp speed rig or the warp speed rigs for auxiliary nano pumps, and then upgrade the nano to tanking modules. You know you can swap the nano for an adaptive nano plate if you want. You can buy a uh, meta um, damage control, take away a warp speed rig, use a cheap CPU implant, and upgrade the coprocessor to you know another nano or a nano plate or something like that. There's a lot of um, things you can do with the fit. Um, if you don't like, if you don't value mobility as much as I do. Okay, so let's take a look at the opening fight in my Armageddon video. This is the fight against the two ruptures, the Saber, the Scythe, the Vexer, the Caracal, and the Confessor. So I didn't actually know this gang was here, I just walked to the gate at zero. I probably should have um, scanned around. It's actually worked out very well for me though. So I end, I end up at the end of a bubble, and this is very good for me. What I want to do is I want to burn away, because the ruptures, um, they do not they do a lot of DPS close range, but they don't do very much DPS um, long range. I don't know that they're alter cannon fit or artillery fit at this point. I just want to burn away, and I just want to get outside damage. I also noticed that the Confessor is very far back. I mean, he is probably beam fit, and I think he is actually beam fit. But um, by burning away burning away from him, he's going to be shoot, shooting me with lower damage ammo. So what I'm doing by burning away here is I'm trying to um, mitigate as much damage as possible. And you can also see that I'm um, pretty pretty much on the edge of the Caracal's range. If I could burn away from him, I might lose some... might be able to drop some of his damage. But um key thing that I did in this fight is I decided to put my newts on the scythe, but I didn't um, put newts on the ships that I'm shooting at. And I'm trying to cap the Scythe out, and the Scythe actually does a very good job of running um, his reps under the nuke pressure. Uh, one important thing I did do is I cycled the um, energy neutralizers. And one thing you've got to remember when you're flying this Armageddon is that you have two heavy newts, and heavy newts have a 24 second cycle time. You do not want to put them both on in rapid succession or very close together, because otherwise what you do is you'll in your alpha someone's capacitor but then they'll have you know 18 plus seconds to regenerate cap and they'll have you know easily um like 12 seconds uninterrupted if you neut neutralize them too close together so you want to spread your newt cycles out um here um i probably didn't do a very good job of that because my new cycles are only about five or six seconds apart i probably should have split them evenly about 12 12 seconds so that way i'll um, keep his cap down at zero for a longer period of time um, so you can see here the, the Scythe's actually getting reps on, his reps are basically on now until my next cycle finishes. So I should have done a better job at doing that. Um, in terms of the primaries, I'm just killing the Ruptures first because um, I, I just consider them to do the most DPS here. I know that the Caracal is a rapid like Caracal and he's going to have to reload soon and I believe he's reloading right now which is why I'm not taking... Well, he's doing damage now now but he will have to reload very soon in this fight and you'll see that soon. Um, the Confessor comes in very close to do max damage to me uh, with his um, beam lasers so he's the next primary for me and I put one new on him just to turn off his um, reps. Whenever you see a Confessor, um, a, t a tactical destroyer, most of them are fitted with afterburners and they normally have an injector as well especially the active tanked one. So one tip that I really recommend you do when you're fighting them is you wait and see, wait until you see the rep cycle and then you turn the new on them and in that way um, you know that they've used their cap booster oftenly and then they're going to have the uh, 10 second reload time on the, on the um, booster as well as the 10 second cooldown. And that's very important when you're fighting ships like the Speepal. Uh, at this point, I'm just my rapid lights, my rapid missiles are reloading. I was aligned out first because I'm not sure quite how much DPS they do. I think the Vexer is a, a younger pilot because his um, drones actually get called back here at this point. I think I actually went out of range of his um, drones. He does have uh, integrated ogres. I mean, his range should be at least 45 kilometers. 
but I might, may have gone out. I don't think he called them back. Well, I could be wrong on that, but you can see the the drones come back on me now. I don't think the Vexer reassigns his drone on me though, so maybe he did manually call them back. I'm able to come back in. At this point, I think the fight's pretty much won. I've got my uh, rapid heavy missiles back on, which is another um, 300 DPS. And at this point, I, d I decide to go for the fight. It doesn't really matter which ship I shoot at this point, so I just decide to get rid of the scythe, just because it will make it cooler if the character is shooting at me and take me into Stroucher. But anyway, I think that this is a very cool opening fight to see um, you know, what the Armageddon is really capable of. And using the mobility to, you know, just mitigate damage. A lot of people don't really um, try to mitigate damage in heavy ships like a battleship. And you can still, um, the Armageddon actually has a very um, long effective range. Um, you have um, full 40 kilometer range on your, um, on um, Tech 2 heavy missiles and a bit more than 60 on um, Faction. You have 60 kilometer range on your drones and then you also have, um, 38 kilometer range when you have heavy neutralizers and people often don't expect a, a battleship um to do as much damage as the armageddon and you don't always have to be in um point range to um shoot stuff and kill stuff and uh stay on grid with it this is just a good example of what the newts do so you can see this character is burning away at this point trying to get out but the newts just shut down his mwd and i'm able to just catch up to him with my uh, armageddon it was a very good fight, it's very close. Um, if I got caught earlier on in that fight and the Raptors got on top of me, I probably would have died there. This is a fight against um, three Sveeples that were following my arm again. So when you're fighting Sveeples, these tactical destroyers, they are very commonly fit with a, an oversized afterburner, then a, a capacitor injector, then normally an active tank. That's the most common fit for Sveeples right now. There's also passive fit Sveeples, they're a bit easier to kill. What you want to do against these Sveeples is you want to um, wet, you want to put one heavy nuke on them, and then as soon as you see them boost shields, then you want to put the second um, energy neutralizer on them. I didn't actually do that in this case against this first people. I was more trying to sort of like cap him out instantly. But you can see I, I should have um, held back on the second new. So what you want to do mostly is just you want to bait the capacitor booster. Um, typically these ships they will have a uh, small capacitor booster with navy 400 charges. And it takes, um, there's a 10 second cooldown when you use the ca capacitor booster. Then it reloads for 10 seconds. So if you can put a new on them, get rid of their cap. And then you wait for the shield boost effect wait for a shield booster, or wait for them to shield boost the HP, then you put the second one on, and then they're pretty much, um, they should be stranded, and you should be able to keep up with them with your um, web when they don't have the um, MWD on. I mean, here I didn't really do a good job of it um, here either, because I don't think he boosted at this point, but the second one is going to finish this cycle soon. So you can see he's shield boosted, but then the second... Uh, thing he comes on then he gets killed because he can't activate his oversized prop to try and get away and I have a web too which is very important for dealing with these oversized um, ships uh, super can burn uh, three kilometers a second um, in speed mode with um, Federation Navy afterburner but if you have your web on them they're only going to be able to go 1.4 kilometers a second and if they don't have you scrammed Especially if they're under new pressure, they sometimes will forget about reactivating their scram on you like this guy. You can keep up with them with your um, overheated afterburner, so they won't actually be able to get away, of you, away from you as long as you've got your web. And a lot of the time they will also, um, they won't switch back to speed mode either. And they're actually pretty slow when they're not in speed mode. They can't actually um, get away from you even with your normal um, MWD. And so this last one burns away. You can see he's burning at um, 4.2 kilometers a second, which is the over um, heated um, speed for a sweeple with a 10 mm afterburner. And that's um, the end of the fight. This is a fight against the Vagabond Confess, and there's also another Vagabond that's in the other system behind that, that I just came from. And so a lot of people were asking me why I brought down the Vagabond um, 
I think it's mostly because I was just expecting to get caught, um, and I'd rather just be on top of him with webs so that he can't get away from me. Um, the Confessor Ali has a long point as well, which uh, maybe I shouldn't have um, brought down the Vagabond as soon as I saw the long point. And I think uh, one mistake I made in this fight is I didn't kill the Confessor. I think I definitely should have killed the Confessor first. Um, um, I was mostly just um, expecting that I was going to die to two Vagabonds and the, uh, and the Confessor. So I decided to just try and kill the <laughs> most expensive ship first, but... Um, the Confessor actually did more damage than this first Vagabond that I'm killing to me. And uh, by being on top of the Vagabond as well, he's able to do full auto cannon DPS to me, and I don't necessarily need to be on top of him. Uh, I can probably keep him stranded with my two heavy newts and just um, like stay at 20k from him if possible. Uh, which is something that I probably should have done, I should have moved away from him. And once the second Vagabond comes in though, he's going to get a scram on me so I can't really move. Which is bad for me, but I, de I definitely think my primary order in this fight was wrong. I should have killed the Confessor first, and then I should have burned away from the um, upper Vagabonds and done damage to him at range. That way, um, I wouldn't have taken as I wouldn't have taken as much damage, and I probably would have killed the owner able to kill the third Vagabond. Um, the other Vagabond also is a MWD um, Scram Web, and, and with a, I presume an auxiliary uh, booster, which isn't the best tank. You can see I almost break him as well through. Um, through his charges when I get around to shooting him. You can see the, the Confessor died so quickly as well because of my nudes and um, I definitely should have gone for that Confessor first. I reload to Scourge here just because um, I don't think the extra two um, thermal missiles are going to do much, much. I might as well reload now. That was my... Uh, I think that m may have been a small mistake. I, I don't really know. I don't... But yeah, I think um, this fight would have been winnable if I would have um, not um, brought in, if I had gone for the Confessor first of all, and then just tried to kite out the uh, the uh, first Vagabond out a bit. I mean, I would have got caught by the Scram eventually, and you know, maybe that Vagabond would have got gotten out, but I would have at least killed this Vagabond as well, my Armageddon would have lived, so yeah, that was uh, definitely a mistake from me. And uh, I ended up dying for it. I mean, if uh, if you had a, a bit of a stronger Armageddon than me as well, because I prefer the max mobility sort of fit, if you had like an auxiliary nan uh, pump instead of um, the hyperspatial rig, you could have probably won this fight as well, I think. I feel those were the most interesting fights. I hope that shines some light on the Armageddon fit and its use. Thanks a lot for watching.